Well, good morning. My name is David Kenny, and I'm the pastor of Walden Community Church here in Montgomery, Texas. And we are doing Christmas devotionals all through December from now all the way until Christmas Day. And each day we're taking a look at one of the Chrismon ornaments that's on our tree. Now, Chrismon is a special word. It's a word that combines Christ with monogram. And so each one of these ornaments tells us about a different attribute of God. Lately, we've been looking at a lot of crosses. We've probably looked at more crosses than you knew even existed. Well, today, good news. Today, we're going to look at the Latin cross. Now, the Latin cross is the cross that you are the most familiar with. It's the cross we recognize, the cross we wear around our necks. You know, there was a custom in Rome that when a person was condemned of a crime, if they were put into prison, they would actually nail a certificate of debt to the prison door and on that certificate of debt, it would write the crime that the person was guilty of. It would also have the number of years that that person would stay in prison, whether it's days or months, whatever. And then when that person had fulfilled their duties to the law, that certificate of debt was marked, paid in full. It was taken, given to a judge, and the judge would have notarized it, signed it themselves. And then that guilty person would carry it with them wherever they went. And if that person were ever accused again, he could pull out that certificate of debt and say, yes, I was found guilty, but I paid my debt in full. There was no double jeopardy back then if you had already paid for a crime. Colossians 2 verses 13 and 14 says, you who were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive together with him, having forgiven us all by our trespasses, by canceling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands, this he set aside, nailing it to the cross. The cross sets us free. Consider the source of the payment of our freedom. It was God, right? How amazing. God paid the ransom to save us. Just like we can't wash ourselves clean, we also can't pay the debt of our sin. But Jesus did. And consider the scope of the payment. The Bible says he forgave all our sins. All our sins were nailed to the cross. This isn't partial payment. It's paid in full for all of time. Like the song we sing, Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain and he washed it white as snow. Jesus paid our debt. He endured our punishment. He nailed it to the cross. My sin is buried when Jesus was buried and my sin debt is paid in full when he rose again. No one can ever rightfully accuse us. No one can condemn us. The only one who even could ever condemn us is God and he already has told us that we are righteous. If you are saved, you can say these same things. And if that's the case, Nothing this world throws at you matters. If you can proclaim these things, it's also not because of what you are or who you are. No, if you can proclaim these things, it's because your life has been transformed. Your sin is forgiven. Your soul is saved. And it was all because of God. All because of what he did at the cross through his son. God wants to give you something today. Something more than just a nice Christmas. God wants to give you his son. He wants to set you free from this world, not from today or even tomorrow. He wants to set you free forever. That's the gospel. That's the good news. And this is what each Christian is thankful for. We want you to know that, to also have that thankfulness in your heart. If you decide that tomorrow should look brighter. I want you to know that it's a simple process. It's as simple as ABC. First, admit. Admit that you're a sinner. You know, there's no shame in admitting that you're not perfect. And if heaven were a reward for perfect people, or if it was a reward for good life, none of us would measure up. Romans 3.23 says, all have sinned and continue to fall short of God's glory. And guess what? Even once you decide to follow Jesus, you're still not perfect. But right now, if you belong to a church, you can be surrounded by people who just like Jesus accept you for who you are with all your faults because a church is a family. 
It's a family made up of people who are also imperfect and who are also broken. But they're a family who loves Jesus. And that takes us to be. Believe. Believe in Jesus. Do you believe that God became a man, that he walked among us? Do you believe that Jesus came to show the world what things like hope and grace and love look like? Do you believe that Jesus stands ready to offer you new life? Jesus is that key. The Bible says, there is no salvation by anyone else. There is no other name under heaven given among people by which we must be saved. That's a verse from Acts 4, 12. And so, if you can admit that you're a sinner and you believe that Jesus is King, he's Lord, he's God, then the Bible says the only thing you have left to do is to confess it, to confess Jesus as your Messiah. The Bible says if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, that you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, 9. Belief and admission. Those are the cornerstones of salvation. And if that sounds like the life you want, if that sounds like the tomorrow you've always wanted, then right now, no matter where you are, I would invite you to bow your head and pray this prayer with me. Dear God, thank you for sending your son Jesus so that I could be your friend. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for being with me all my life, even when I didn't know it. And I realize now I need a savior to set me free from sin, from myself and from all the habits and hurts and hangups that continue to mess up my life. I ask you to forgive me of my sin. I wanna repent and live the way that you created me to live. Be the Lord of my life. Save me with your grace. I wanna to learn to love you, trust you, and become everything that you made me to be. Thank you for creating me and choosing me to be a part of your family, amen. If you prayed that prayer, I would invite you to plug into a local church anywhere. Plug into a church, talk to some people, tell them about your experience, share your life with them, and they will share their lives with you. Merry Christmas.